this morning. And though the storms they come, I am holding on to the rock I cling. Sing, how can I keep? How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing your love how can I keep from shouting your name no I am loved by the king and it makes my heart want to sing and I will lift my eyes in the dark
things I at last shall see will be my joy through the ages to see of his love for me sing it how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall We're going to sing a new song this morning. And it wasn't planned out, uh, but I think it goes really well with the freedom that we're going to be discussing this morning. The song is called I Am Healed. And it deals with the, the now, not yet paradox that is healing in the, in the Christian life. So on the one hand, we're freed from bondage. We're dead to sin, made alive, and we've been healed spiritually. On the other hand, we're not quite there yet. We haven't received the adoption of sons yet, like a glorified body. So though we're healed, we're not yet healed. Does that make sense? So I know there's some of you that might be struggling this morning with sickness, chaos, or darkness in general in your life. So this morning we want to invite you to sing this out as best you can, seeing as how it is a new song. If you'd like to come forward and pray, or um, why don't we go ahead and have our prayer counselors come forward, and uh, we'll open up the front area. We want to sing this over you this morning. If you're struggling, if you're sick, if you're in need of any kind of healing, physical or spiritual. So it goes like this. for my 
as loud as you can this morning. Sickness, you have no power here. Darkness, you have no power here. Chaos, you have no power here. In Jesus' name. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased in it, I never alone, your good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. Peace so 
Receive our offering this morning. Let's go ahead and pray, dedicate this time to Him, and then we'll just continue to worship. If you did fill out one of those cards, it would be a good time now to drop that in the offering plate for supporting the student ministry next week. You can also turn those in at the end of the service, so we will need some ushers at the doors, please, at the end of the service. You can see Pete. Let's just continue with a heart of prayer and neat things are going to happen today. I just really feel it and believe it. God wants to continue to move in our hearts and our lives. And I feel that there's some walls of resistance to His Spirit that Satan has built, the enemy's built in our lives. And I think God wants to show us how He wants to tear those down and break through those today. So we're trusting His Spirit to teach us and to reveal to us powerful things today that when we walk out of here, we'll not just know we're free, but we'll experience the freedom He's given to us. Father, thank You that we can give to You and we can worship You in all kinds of ways, God. And even now, Father, as we receive this morning offering, I pray your hand, your blessing upon it, God, that you'll continue to provide the resources, the power of your spirit that we need to do what you call us to do. Where you will, you'll provide the way, and we trust you. And we just thank you that we get to be a part of it. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Sickness, you have no power here. Darkness, you have no power here. Chaos, you have no power here. In Jesus' name. 
today, we're going to be in Galatians 5, 1, and I want you to do something for me right now, okay? I want you to, most of you know you have your phone. I want you to go ahead and take your phone out. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he's going to tell us to turn off our cell phone right now. No. Here's what I'm going to ask you to ask the Spirit of God right now to lay somebody on your heart. Someone you need to pray for. And take your phone and right now text them and tell them that you're praying for them, okay? Now, you say, I don't have my phone with me or whatever, that's fine. You can still ask the Spirit of God to lay somebody on your heart and your mind right now. It might even be somebody in the service right here with us at this point in time. You can even put, you know, I'm sitting in church and thought of you and wanted to pray for you. You could say, just came to my mind and thought I'd pray for you. So you do that right now. Think of somebody who might need to be encouraged today and let them know you're praying for them. Amen. Amen. Now, now do this. If you thought about somebody and you pray for somebody who's not here today and you sent that, awesome. Now I want you to think of somebody who is here today and send them the text right now, okay? Amen. Amen. Now, if you just text with somebody in the service, or you're thinking and praying for somebody in the service, now text them and say, turn to Galatians 5, verse 1. we got some really neat stuff we're going to talk about today. Amen and amen. How many of you have heard of Corey Ten Boom? Heard of Corey Ten Boom? Corey Ten Boom was a Dutch Christian who, along with her father and other family members, helped many Jews escape the Nazi Holocaust during World War II. She was imprisoned for her help of the Jews. Here's what she said, though. She said, forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment and the, and the handcuffs of hatred. It is a power that breaks the chains of bitterness and the shackles of selfishness. Corey Ten Boom, though she was a prisoner for her actions, Though she was a prisoner on the outside because of her circumstances, she experienced freedom on the inside because of her faith in Christ. We've talked a little bit about a paradox today, and one of those paradoxes is that many times on the outside, 
you can feel anything but free. On the outside, you can feel anything but healed. On the outside, you can feel anything but whole. I would dare say that many of us today, due to external circumstances, are experiencing all kinds of outward challenges. They're affecting us inwardly, right? Fear, worry and anxiety, depression, insecurity, guilt, shame, loss of a job, loss of health, you name it. All kinds of things press in on us externally. We have external pressures. We also have internal pressures. And what we want to suggest to you today is that God doesn't just want to set you free from stuff going around in your life. In fact, You'll continue to have stuff going on in your life. He really wants to set you free inwardly first. You can have internal freedom, although externally you can have tons of challenge. And here's what I'm going to suggest to you as well. I believe that even things that we would identify as being internal, like fear, worry, depression, anxiety, we think of those internally but they're not issues or matters of the soul. They're still matters of the flesh. Those are still external things that we feel internally. God wants to set you free. One of the amazing things coming to Galatians 5, verse 1 today, and thinking about what it means to be free, what it means to really be free, and most of you know, this is one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. Paul's writing to a group of people who are experiencing some external forces and external pressure, and it has to do in regards to their relationship with God. So Paul wants to encourage them. He writes to them in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. We'll look at the text here. He says, it was for freedom that Christ has set us, and what's this last word? Free. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, next part of this verse, therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a what? To a yoke of slavery. How many of you feel like you might have a, some kind of yoke of slavery in your life today? Some kind of external circumstance, external pressure. Again, I even identify Anxiety, worry, fear, those things are part of this body of our flesh. Those are still external, but we feel them internally, if that makes sense. How many of you today feel like there is some kind of yoke of slavery in your life? Now, for these folks, the yoke of slavery would have been to go back under the Mosaic Law and try to earn God's favor on their own, by what they do. Paul did not want to see them go down that road. He didn't want to see them experience religious slavery, although there's all kinds of yokes of slavery. He wants us to experience, watch this, the yoke of Christ, not the yoke of slavery. The yoke of Christ, if you will remember what Jesus said, and he was talking about people who were under all kinds of religious pressure, external circumstances. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are what? All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if I'm carrying a yoke today, whatever that is, that is not easy, if I'm carrying a, a yoke today that is a great burden in my life that's pressing me down, then I can know I am not carrying the yoke of Christ. And I need to cast that yoke of slavery off and put on the yoke of Christ 
And here's the interesting thing. I can do that because he has already provided to me and for me what I need to walk free. Let's go back to the first part of the verse. He says it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Something that I want you to process today, if you're in Christ, I want you to, to let that kind of process and soak in that in Christ you are free. You might even need to say that to yourself right now. In Christ, I am free. I am free. However, the question that Paul was helping these folks to deal with was the question about their experience of that freedom. He says it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. In other words, Christ has set us free. Christ has set you free. And he's really set you free from all of those things. Actually, the, the heart and the root of that thing that causes all this other stuff that is going on in your life. Namely, the power of sin. Christ has set you free from the power of sin. But the question is, are you experiencing the freedom that he affords to you today? Here's something else that I want you to process in your mind. You can say to yourself, Christ has set me free, but I want to experience everything that he has for me in my freedom. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. The philosophers talk about two kinds of freedom. They talk about a negative freedom, which is a freedom from something. Paul's helped folks to understand here, and I hope you understand too, that in Christ you are free from the power of sin. The power of sin produces all kinds of things in your life. Now, the power of sin is still there. It is still present. You still deal with it, but it doesn't have shackles on you like it once did. You have a new master. Your master is Christ. You have a new partner. Your partner is Christ. You were once married to the power of sin. You've been set free from the power of sin. You are now joined to Jesus. He is your partner. He is your spiritual spouse. He is your friend. He is your mate. He is the one who walks with you. You walk with him. Christ is my friend. I've been set free from one power and one master to serve and to walk and to love Christ. However, that power is still there. The power of sin still raises its ugly head in my life. Does it raise its head in your life? It raises its head in my marriage. It raises its head when I try to raise my kids. It raises my head in that thing that God's called me to do with my life. Job, work, vocation, calling, career. It raises its head there. Listen to this. Even when I'm by myself and I'm not dealing with anybody else, it raises its head personally here with me. In fact, Sometimes, for some of us, the worst place that we can be is to be alone. Because sometimes when we're alone, with our own thoughts and our feelings, the power of sin raises its head, starts speaking all kinds of things into our lives, right? All kinds of lies, untruths. And the next thing you know, you start listening to the power of sin. You start feeling yourself slipping back under its control and under its power, right? Right? And that's where fear, anxiety, depression, guilt, all of that is coming from in our lives. Paul says Christ has set us free. He has set us free from that. But he wants us to experience the freedom that he's given to us. Philosophers say there's a negative freedom. It's called the freedom from something. We have been set free from those things. We've been set free from from the power of sin. I do not have to succumb, yield myself to that power. And guess what? When I do, it's my responsibility, it's my choice. I have a decision in that. 
and it can bring all kinds of negative consequences and ramifications into my life, into my marriage, into my family, into everything else I'm a part of in my life, right? But there's another side of freedom. It's not just the negative expression of freedom, which is freedom from something, it is actually freedom to something. It's freedom to something. This is the part of this where a lot of people kind of get nervous when we start talking about Christian freedom or being free in Christ. Sometimes Christians start getting really nervous when we start talking about this because they start thinking about what people are going to do with their freedom. It's kind of like the pastor who said, you know what, I would really like for my people to be free, but I am scared to death of what they will do with their freedom. That's a tough place to be in. I'd like to set my people free. I'd like for them to know that they're free. But my goodness, what are they going to do with their freedom? How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but truly, in all honesty today, the concept or the idea of Christian freedom as a, as a Christian person makes you a little nervous and makes you a little uncomfortable because you worry about what somebody might do with their freedom. One of the early church fathers said this. He said, when it comes to freedom, he said, freedom is not lack of restraint. It is not just freedom to do whatever. He says, it's actually, listen to this, freedom to be what you were meant to be. I want you to think about a sailboat for a second, okay? I want you to think about a sailboat. What is a sailboat destined to do? What's the purpose of a sailboat? How many of y'all would say it's to sail, right? It's to not sink, it is to sail, right? That's the purpose of a sailboat, right? When a sailboat is anchored or docked, is it getting to do and be everything that it was created to do and to be? No. For the sailboat to be and to do what it was created to be and to do, it has to be set free from the anchor or from the dock. And here's what happens. The sailboat hoists its sails up to the wind, right? And then the wind takes the sailboat at the directive of the wind, right? And you can say in that moment that the sailboat is free, but it's free to be all that it was designed and purposed to do. It is to hoist its sail, set its sail to the wind, and then let the wind carry it. The freedom that is expressed there is freedom to set one sail to the wind and let the wind take it where the wind wants it to go. For the believer in Christ, to be set free is to be set free to the dictates of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. People were created to walk with God to begin with. We were created for God. When we're set free in Christ, it's a freedom to be and to do all that God destined and designed for us to do. Here's the thing that blows a lot of people's minds. When you are shackled and bound to the power of sin or to anything else, it's at that point you're not truly allowed to, to do and to be what God's called you to do and to be. In fact, when you're shackled in that way, and you can even be shackled to religious rules and regulations and ideas, you're still not free to be and to do all that God's called you to be and to do. In other words, you're not free to truly bear fruit to God. You have to be set free to do that. It's a freedom to God. It's a freedom to walk to, with Him. It's a freedom to let the Holy Spirit guide you in your life and to do with your life what He wants to do. And here's the thing about it. It takes the pressure and it takes the stress off of you. And you can say, God, here I am. Do with my life what you want to do with my life. God, Here's my marriage. 
do with my marriage what you want to do with my marriage. God, here's my job, here's my work, here's my education. God, here it is. Here I am. Do with me what you want to do in my life. Christ has set you free to be all that he's called you and desires of you in your life. Galatians 5, verse 13, is going to address some of the issues that people really struggle with when it comes to the idea of Christian freedom. Listen to what he says. For you were called to what? Freedom, brethren. Then he says this. However, or do not, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the what? For the flesh. At this point, we could say this, but you need to really kind of think through this. We could say, Christ has set me free from the power of sin. But he didn't set me free for the purpose of sin. In other words, the positive freedom, the freedom to something, is not freedom to go back under the power of sin. Why? Why not? Now, aren't you glad to know that when you sin and you mess up and you make mistakes that you're forgiven? Aren't you glad to know that? Aren't you glad to know that God is not waiting to bonk you on the head with the mistakes that you make in your life? Aren't you glad to know that He sends His Holy Spirit into your life and He will show you where you misstep. He'll show you how to get back into touch with the wind. He'll be the loving guide that brings you back to where you need to be. Why not? Why is Christian freedom not to be an opportunity for the flesh? Even though when we sin and we make mistakes, even as believers, He picks us up and He sets us right and we can walk on. Because when I am living in accordance to the flesh, I'm going back under a what? A power that I was set free from to begin with. To live in sin or to live in accordance to the flesh is to find yourself drifting back into a life, not of freedom, but actually a life of bondage. He didn't set you free so that you could go back and be in bondage. He sets you free so you can experience all the freedom He wants to give you. He sets you free that you might fully live to Him. There was a movie a few years ago called Moneyball. It's a movie about the 2002 o Oakland Athletics baseball team how they set the American League record of winning. They won an unprecedented 20 consecutive games. Yet despite all their successes, the A's lost in the first round of the postseason. There's a scene in the movie where the general manager, Billy Bean, who's played by Brad Pitt, he feels like a failure. And he's sitting alone in the clubhouse, and the assistant general manager, Peter Brand, comes to him. This was the Yale mastermind who helped turn around the athletic uh, organization and, and had a new way of recruiting players and drafting players and evaluating skill. And he was the mastermind kind of behind their success of that season. He's trying to convince the general manager that they've actually been pretty successful that year. So then he shows him a video clip about a player named Jeremy Brown. Jeremy Brown was a player from their minor league team. He was a 240-pound catcher. And he was afraid to run to second base. 
a few games prior to this conversation in the clubhouse, Brand shows Bean a video clip of Billy Brown. 240-pound catcher, he's at the plate. Fastball comes down the middle. He hits the ball. Deep center field. Brown starts around first base, and he's thinking to himself, he's thinking, I'm going to do it. I'm really going to do it this time. I am going to run to second base. He rounds first base, and as he rounds first base, he then all of a sudden throws on the brakes, he falls down, and he literally crawls back to first base, and he hugs first base like a kid hugging a teddy bear. The people in the stands start laughing. They start jeering. He has no idea what's going on. He thinks he just hit a single, right? But then he realizes why everybody's laughing. The ball he hit went 60 feet over the wall. He hit a home run, but he didn't know it. And his fear crippled him to first base. Why is it that so many of us who are Christians are scared to run confidently through life? Billy Brown, when he realized he hit the home run, he gets up and he jubilantly starts running around the bases. He rounds third, and you know what he does? He heads home in confidence and in joy. You know why? Because the home run's been hit. The point that Paul's trying to help us to understand today is that Christ has set us free. Jesus hit the home run. <laughs> he has done for us everything that needs to be done in order for us to be right with God and to live confidently and to jubilantly run around the bases of life and head home. He's given us everything that we need today to hoist the sails, to let go of the anchor and the docks that bind us and causes us to stumble and to fall. And He's provided for us everything in this life that we need to live victoriously in freedom. So if you're not living free, it's not because Jesus hasn't set you free. If you're not living free, it's because somewhere you bought a lie. scared but you have no reason to be scared with your heads bowed today would you stand with us you ladies today I don't know maybe for you guys too Francesca Battistelli released a song in 2008 here's some of the lyrics in that song at 20 years of age I'm still looking for a dream a war's already waged for my destiny but you've already won the battle. And you've got great plans for me, though I can't always see. Because I got a couple of dents in my fender, a couple of rips in my jeans. Try to fit the pieces together, but perfection is my enemy. And on my own, I'm so... I wish y'all would. I wish the ladies would just start singing that. Wouldn't that be really cool if the ladies just started singing that right now? I know some people go, I don't know what song you're talking about. I listen to WCBL. We rock to the oldies. This is 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Contemporary Christian music. Try to fit the pieces together, but perfection is my enemy. On my own, I'm so clumsy, but on your shoulders, I can see I'm free to what? Ladies, come on. I'm free to what? But you've got to know who you are in Christ to understand the freedom we're talking about today. He doesn't call you to be perfect. He doesn't call you to have it all together. Listen, Jesus doesn't even call you to be a good hitter at the plate. He doesn't call you to do this on your own. He just calls you to pull up anchor, untie from that which binds you, and put your sails in the face of his wind. And he will carry you by his spirit to everything he's got for your life. And when your flesh starts to pull you down and pull you to the side, you speak back to your flesh and you say, I'm free. I'm free to be me. The chorus is still going off in my head. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want me to sing it, I promise. But how many of you today would say, I really need to start experiencing this freedom he's given to me.